Troy University and the City of Troy present Celebrating Leadership and Legacy, a transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. To introduce the program, here is Dr. Dion Rosser-Milms. Good evening. My name is Dr. Dion Rosser-Milms, Vice Chancellor of the Troy University Phoenix City Campus and board member of the Leadership Conference. It is my distinct honor to welcome each of you to the 2021 virtual leadership event hosted by Troy University and the City of Troy. This event is titled Celebrating Leadership and Legacy, a transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. This year would have marked the 20th year in hosting a joint leadership conference and bringing individuals together to promote dialogue that fosters multicultural collaboration Troy University and the City of Troy present Celebrating Leadership and Legacy, a transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. To introduce the program, here is Dr. Dion Rosser-Milms. Good evening. My name is Dr. Dion Rosser-Milms, Vice Chancellor of the Troy University Phoenix City Campus and board member of the Leadership Conference. It is my distinct honor to welcome each of you to the 2021 virtual leadership event hosted by Troy University and the City of Troy. This event is titled Celebrating Leadership and Legacy, a transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. This year would have marked the 20th year in hosting a joint leadership conference and bringing individuals together to promote dialogue that fosters multicultural collaboration to strengthen and empower diverse leaders. Despite the hazards of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have chosen to continue the legacy by providing this virtual Congressman John R. Lewis leadership event. While this is our official leadership event, next year will mark the official renamed Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. At this time, I would like to recognize several of our distinguished guests who will offer greetings in this order. Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr., Chancellor of Troy University, Mayor Jason Reeves of the City of Troy, and Ms. Nicole J. John, President of Troy University's Student Government Association. Next, we will hear from our keynote speaker, Dr. Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, President of Dorothy Buchanan Wilson LLC and 29th International President of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Dr. Wilson will be followed by Mrs. Sheila Jackson, City of Troy Director of Public Relations and Board Member who will also honor the late S.D. James, Bishop of the Evangelistic Pentecostal Churches Worldwide Incorporated, and an advisory board member of the Leadership Conference. Concluding remarks will be delivered by Mrs. Mary J. Griffin, event chairperson. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Worldwide Troy University family, it's my honor to bring greetings for this virtual leadership event. 
Since 2002, this event has made a difference in the communities we serve. And I thank Mayor Jason Reeves and the city of Troy for being outstanding partners in this endeavor. I'd be remiss too if I didn't thank Miss Mary Griffin for serving as the chair of the advisory board this year. And always a very special thank you to the Honorable Lamar P. Higgins for his vision in creating this leadership conference. Over the years, this event has drawn more than 6,000 attendees. That includes over 1,000 Troy University students. And I believe this reflects our status as the most diverse university in Alabama. We're very proud that our student body is made up of about 30% African Americans. We enroll students from 80 different countries and on any given day, you can hear more than 85 different languages spoken. And I might add, we are very proud to claim 28,000 African American alumni from Troy University. This past year has been an exciting year, but it's been one filled with challenge and change. We lost great friends who were instrumental in this event's success. Friends such as the late Bishop S.D. James and Pike County Commissioner Charlie Harris. Their leadership made a difference as our leadership conference grew from just a few dozen attendees two decades ago to more than hundreds typical participants uh, during our recent years of operation. On the national level, we mourn the passing of our friend and the boy from Troy, United States Representative John Robert Lewis. It was Dr. Martin Luther King who put that label on Congressman Lewis and we were so proud that he had such an identity with Troy and Troy University. Congressman Lewis was a past keynote speaker at this conference and we always enjoyed it when he came home. Indeed, he loved his hometown and he grew over time to love his hometown university, even though in 1957 he was denied admission to Troy State College. We at Troy University are honored to call John Robert Lewis an alumnus as we awarded him the honorary doctorate in 1989. And we're very proud that the most prominent building on our campus today bears the name John Robert Lewis Hall. As Dr. Rosser Mims pointed out earlier, beginning in 2022, the this annual conference will be known as the Congressman John Robert Lewis Leadership Conference. And it'll be with great pride that we promote it under that label. The passing of these three men that I've mentioned, I truly believe underscores the importance of this very conference, the importance of the conference in preparing the next generation of leaders. Leaders who are prepared to serve our communities. I want to thank each of you for participating in this year's event. I appreciate so much your support of not only the event, but also of Troy University. May God bless you. Hi, I'm Jason Reeves. I'm the mayor of the city of Troy. And on behalf of the citizens of Troy and the Troy City Council, I'd like to welcome you to this year's leadership conference celebrating leadership and legacy, a transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. It's been an honor for the city of Troy to participate in this leadership conference with Troy University and many others through these 20 plus years. We'd like to thank you for taking your time to be with us, to learn, to, to embrace the ideas and the legacy of people like Congressman Lewis and S.D. James and so many others. Enjoy your time. Let's look back, but also look forward to next year when we can be together in person. God bless you. Good evening, esteemed guests and conference participants. My name is Nicole J. John, and it is my honor on behalf of Troy University, the student body, and the Student Government Association to welcome you all to the Congressman John Robert Lewis Leadership Conference. 
The theme of the conference is leadership and legacy, and what an incredible legacy Congressman Lewis has left, not only on our campus, but worldwide. He was a courageous man who led by great faith and wasn't afraid to get into some good trouble once in a while. My hope for you all is that by the end of this conference, you will have gained a new perspective on the meaning of leadership and legacy, learn devices to develop yourself as a leader, and maybe leave your own legacy while getting into a bit of good trouble. Thank you. Our keynote speaker is one of the foremost experts on leadership in our nation. She has drawn on her corporate experience at Fortune 500 companies such as Xerox, SC Johnson Wax, and Goodwill Industries in developing leadership strategies that work. Dr. Buchanan Wilson's philosophy of leadership is captured in her popular book, You Can Lead. As you will soon learn, Dr. Buchanan Wilson is a dynamic speaker. She is the recipient of over 500 different awards for professional achievement and community service. She has been profiled in national publications such as Essence Magazine and Ebony Magazine. She is the first in her family to graduate college and holds degrees from Benedict College and Clark Atlanta University. Dr. Buchanan Wilson is a life member of the NAACP and the National Council of Negro Women. She has a strong track record of civic and community engagement and led her sorority's voter registration efforts in 2016 with record numbers of young people registering and continues to push for civil and human rights in every arena. I know each of you will find her remarks inspirational and enlightening. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Dion Rosser Mims, for that most gracious introduction. I appreciate your kind remarks. To Chancellor Hawkins, members of the Board of Directors, to Mayor Jason Reeves, to Mrs. Mary Griffin, Chairman of this illustrious event, to members of the family of Congressman John Lewis, to members of the Troy University faculty and staff, to the amazing students here at Troy University, led by your SGA president, Nicole J. John, to all community supporters, and I would like to give a special shout out to two groups, to the members of Mu Alpha Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, and the members of Kappa Pi Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. They are respectively the undergraduate chapter on campus, as well as the graduate chapter in the Troy community in Pike County. And I did not want to, as their immediate past international president, not acknowledge them on this special occasion. I am honored to be here with you this evening virtually as a part of this 20th anniversary leadership conference, which is now being named and transitioned to honor the legacy and the service of Congressman John Lewis. It is a pleasure to be here at Troy University, home to this powerful conference. And I was just delighted to hear that you have over 28,000 African-American alumna. What an accomplishment. Thank you so much, Chancellor Hawkins, for sharing that information with us. This is now also home to a recently named building. The most prominent building on the campus is now named in honor of Congressman John Lewis. So it's a pleasure to be here and to have accepted your most gracious introduction. Like so many of you here on this call, I had the opportunity to know and to speak with, through the years, Congressman John Lewis. When I visited Washington, D.C. as a part of the annual Congressional Black Caucus Conference and Delegation, I would find him in his office working very hard 
for the citizens in the 5th District of Georgia. He knew that I was just as proud of my roots growing up in rural South Carolina as he was of his roots growing up in Pike County. In 2016, I had the honor, when I was serving as international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, we had the honor of presenting to the Honorable Congressman John Lewis, one of our organization's highest honor for distinction and for service to our nation. And we did that in Atlanta in his district at our international conference, which was witnessed by over 22,000 individuals. As we stood on our feet for over five minutes in thunderous applause in just honoring Congressman Lewis, as he wiped away tears from his eyes, he turned to me and said, Ms. Wilson, this is all very nice. And I truly appreciate this award. And I accept this award on behalf of my family and on behalf of all the boys and girls who, just like us, grew up in rural, the rural South. But here is what I want you to do for me. When he said that, we all immediately sat down back into our seats because we knew that a lesson was coming. And here's what he said, and I quote, Congressman Lewis said, I need each of the 22,000 folks gathered here today, this evening, to be inspired by my actions and leave here prepared to get into good trouble, necessary trouble, to get in the way. I need each of you to commit to me this evening that when you see things that are not right, not just, not in order, that you will use your personal moral compass and that you will stand up because you have an obligation to do so. You will say something, you will do something, and you will be about action. Commit that you will not be silent. For if you do that, then you will be showing that we all have the power to step up the power to make a difference, and the power to change this nation by leading in the trenches at the community level." End quote. And do you know what happened next? After Congressman Lewis gave us that charge very publicly in that booming voice of his, that crowd of over 22,000 people who were at that conference jumped back on their feet. They cheered loudly. And they took Congressman Lewis's bold call to action, not only back across the 50 states of the United States of America, but we also had 12 nations represented there that evening. So that call to action went out. As members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, we were very proud of that moment. That moment was also witnessed by other members of the fraternities and sorority community that we are part of, including his beloved Phi Beta Sigma fraternity along with, as I said earlier, citizens from across Atlanta and over 22,000 conference attendees. We paid attention, we listened, and we went out and took action because that's the kind of impact, that's the leadership legacy that Congressman John Lewis had, and that's the kind of leader he was. He motivated you with his hard work, with his message, with his action, and with his vision for a better future. So when you think about where we are today, who we are today, our progress as a people, and indeed where we are as a nation, we can point proudly to the legacy, the leadership legacy of Congressman, Congressman John Lewis, because he has been a leader from the very beginning. He was one of the youngest leaders in the civil rights movement. He was an influential world and national leader. He was a committed freedom fighter who stood proudly by Dr. Martin Luther King's side. He was one who barely survived Bloody Sunday. And he was one who went on to help plan and then served as one of the youngest speakers at the historic March on Washington. John Robert Lewis was a bold advocate for justice, a powerful voice for racial equality, a torchbearer who would not let Dr. King's dream be deferred. He was a gentle man with an humble heart and he was extremely kind to those who knew him. He was a man who met no strangers, who loved helping people. He was one who believed in this nation, but more importantly, he believed in its promise. John Lewis was the voice and the conscience of the United States Congress for well over 34 years. 
I'm reminding you of those achievements, and I know that you know those achievements, but I think it's important to lift them up on this evening as we talk about now transitioning this historic conference that has stood for over 20 years that will now be renamed the John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. As we celebrate this evening, not only Troy University, but we celebrate Black History Month, and now we are celebrating the legacy and the leadership legacy of John Lewis, a native son who went on and became a national and a global civil rights icon. Thank you so much to the Honorable Trustee Lamar P. Higgins for this opportunity to be here. But more importantly, thank you for your leadership in starting this conference 20 years ago. And thank you also to Dr. Shirley Woody, who helped to bring this vision to light. Because of this event, which now brings the community, the student population, and national leaders together. At the top of each year, you come together to figure out how to better work together to make social change. We will now be able to immortalize the leadership legacy of Congressman John Lewis into perpetuity because this conference will now stand to represent what he stood for. The Honorable John Lewis when we think about him and we think now about this conference and tie those two things together, we say what a lasting and a most fitting tribute to now have this, Congress name, this conference named in his honor. As we examine the theme for this evening, we see that it is focused on celebrating leadership and legacy as we transition now to a new era with the conference, to the students, the community, the family, and to all other leaders gathered here today, our charge now is to focus on leadership and legacy. Yes, leadership and legacy. That's our call to action. For you see, it's nice to celebrate, but in the spirit of Congressman Lewis, our call now is to make sure that we are fulfilling his mission of showing bold, fearless leadership by taking action on things that matter to improve the lives of people in this community and the lives of people globally across this country and indeed the world. That's what getting into good trouble is all about. So look at where we are currently as we deal with the global pandemic known as COVID-19. And we can all say and agree that we know that we've been living through a state of chaos for the past year. Life as we know it has virtually stopped. This has been for many in our community a disaster of epic proportion, a situation that they didn't see coming, millions unemployed, many people struggling for their next meal, trying to figure out where they're going to live, many people losing their homes, isolation from families and friends, a disease that is literally running rampant in our community and definitely negatively impacting African-Americans in a disproportionate way. And when you add to that, the current climate in this nation of racial, voting and civil unrest, if ever there was a time to show leadership, if ever there was a time to show boldness of leadership, if ever there was a time to get in the way, to shake things up, to make a way out of no way, to remind those in power that we must, with our resources as a nation, take care of all God's children, the frail, the young, the least of these. If ever there was a time to get into good trouble, to get in the way, that time is now. We have a clear charge. We have a clear legacy that has been left to us to carry forth by the Honorable John Lewis. That legacy will be carried forth by all of us this weekend who are participating in this conference, especially those of us on the call this evening. But that legacy will always be carried forth by those who will come to future conferences because it is now being dedicated in his honor. That legacy is to get into good trouble get into necessary trouble, and yes, get in the way. That legacy requires courage. It requires us making a conscious decision that we will do something, stand for something, and change things always with our action. And it does not matter who you are. Everyone, yes, each of us present this evening and each, of, each one under the sound of my voice, we can all take that legacy forward because it's the legacy of leading by action. So while we are celebrating Black history, while we are celebrating civil rights, and now while we are celebrating the legacy of this amazing leader, through our attendance and involvement this evening, 
we know that our charge is to move forward ready to get into trouble, but that trouble is to make a difference in the lives of others. That's a legacy that all students present can take forward. That's a legacy all the community leaders can take forward. And that's a legacy for all of us who are here committed to continuing the fight for justice and equality that we can take forward. I am reminded today that Congressman Lewis and all of those freedom fighters who laid their lives down on the line each day did so keeping in mind the teachings of Micah 6 and 8. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. They acted fairly towards each other. They acted fairly towards others, even those who were not kind to them. They showed kindness and they walked humbly, keeping in step with the spirit. And they leaned heavily on their faith and led with their faith because they knew that their faith would lead them to definite action. Here was a young man who saw injustice as a teenager and decided that he would seek justice the moment he got a chance. His leadership legacy of getting into good trouble started when he was a college student, like many of you on the call this evening. One day, Mrs. Rosa Parks stood up. One day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood up. And then a very young John Lewis stood up. And the rest is history. Think about this. If he had not worked, marched, fought, and suffered beside Dr. King, John Lewis would not have been who he was, and our lives, I would venture to guess, would have been very different. The community that we live in, the community around Troy, would have been very different. This university and the lives of those 28,000 African-American alumni would have been very, very different. So when we look at life and leadership legacy and think about Congressman John Lewis, there are four key leadership legacy actions that I strongly encourage you to think about, adopt, and carry forth as we leave this place and think about getting into good trouble, necessary trouble, and getting in the way. These four actions are, number one, make a difference. Number two, get and stay involved. Number three, fight peacefully for what is right. And number four, work hard. Leadership action number one, make a difference or make the difference. Many things we do every day are routine, but what makes them memorable, my friends, is when you add your special imprint or your special touch. As those who will get into good trouble while making change in the community, the nation, and the world, you should always look for ways to step up your game and leave things better than you found them. This leadership action is really directed this evening to students and to young people in this community who may be listening to this message because you have been inspired by the legacy of John Lewis and other student leaders who stepped out bravely this past year and spoke with their voices to make a difference. The message is to make the difference no matter where you find yourself in life, but when you see things that are not right or just, always be willing to step out and say something and to do something. So if you're a student, ask yourself this evening, how do I take my skills and talents to the next level and use them to make needed changes, not only on the campus, but wherever I might be? How do I make sure that my voice is heard? Take a critical look at your life. Are you involved with making a difference on this campus or off campus? When you see or experience unjust policies or practices, do you say something? Or do you simply stay quiet and go with the status quo? Do you look for ways to leave your imprint on this campus or in this community? Do you think about very intentionally how you are going to get into good trouble? That's the leadership legacy that you have been left. As our next generation of leaders decide starting today that you will follow in the steps of those young activists and those young leaders of your generation who started in the last few years with all kinds of movements in this nation. In addition to following them, say to yourself, how do I now become a part of that movement and how do I become a leader in that movement? Decide that you will follow in the leadership legacy of Congressman Lewis and go on a path of making a difference by stepping up and elevating all that you do. Yes, make a difference. You represent our new generation of young activists and leaders who are seeking productive ways 
to get in the way. So we know that your work is just starting, but we also know that with your lifetime of service in front of you, you can make that difference every day starting now. If we are to address inequality, each of us, but especially our young emerging leaders who are here this evening must be willing to make the difference by standing up, being persistent, adding a special touch, thinking next level, and putting in the hard work. So the first leadership legacy lesson I'm sharing with you is to get into good trouble, necessary trouble, by going out and making the difference with clear, life-changing actions in all that you do. The second leadership legacy action I urge you to take, and that's each of us, as we get into good trouble, is to get involved. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best. He said that each of us can be great because each of us can serve. It doesn't matter who you are, your position, whether you're a student leader, a community leader, a religious leader, or a global leader. We all have work to do. We all must get involved. Many in our community are struggling to just get through this pandemic every day. We're living in an unprecedented time. The final chapter of the civil rights movement, which is to achieve economic equality, is being tested as we speak, and this pandemic has accelerated it. Entrenched discrimination and structural racism is as strong today as it was 65 years ago when Congressman Lewis joined the civil rights movement. This past year, we saw an unprecedented level of civic engagement and involvement as many around the country went out and peacefully protested. Last summer, at one point on one given day, there were protests going on, peaceful protests in 50 states as well as 20 nations around the globe. That says to us that there is work to be done and many citizens just like us realize sometimes our voices just need to be heard. We should always be prepared to stand for what is right, stand for what is just, and also we must get involved and be ready to stand to get involved. One of the last public acts of Congressman John Lewis, if you think about it, was when he appeared this past summer in Washington, D.C. at the Black Lives Matter movement, the plaza in Washington, D.C., to show by his example that now more than ever, we must all get and stay involved to help fix systemic issues that are facing us. This is not the time to pull back. This is not the time to think small. This is not the time to stay quiet. Our voices matter. Our leadership matters. Our actions matter. The clear leadership legacy charged to those of us here at this conference this year is that we must become involved to rid this country of racism, to achieve economic equality, to end hunger, to address poverty in a meaningful way. We must become the change that we are seeking. We can't ask others to do what we are not willing to do, but we must get involved with causes and groups that matter. We have to initiate and to hold the crucial conversations around race, equality, and equity, and then work, yes, work, to make sure those things happen. We must also make sure that we're getting in the way productively. No longer can we sweep matters under the rug and hope that they go away or ignore things for the sake of political expediency. The deaths of the death this past summer of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor, just to name a few, was a very loud wake up call to all of us saying that we must all, all increase our level of involvement, civic engagement, and that we must all work to make sure that the promise of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the promise of Rosa Parks and the promise of John Lewis, which is to make sure that there is fairness and equity for all, that that promise is fulfilled. Even today, we are being called upon to get and stay involved as unrest and questions about the recent elections continue as we speak. We cannot sit back and let the gains and everything that's happened since 1965 be rolled back. We must stay involved. We must make the difference. We must continue to get in the way. We all have a stake in the future direction of this nation, and continued progress can only occur, can only occur through our active involvement in things that matter. So get into good trouble. 
your second leadership le le legacy action is to get and stay involved. The third action I urge you to take as you get into good trouble and move this leadership legacy forward is to fight, but fight in a nonviolent way for what is right. Yes, we are currently facing many challenges, but struggle and overcoming struggle is not new to those of us who seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. At this critical moment, we must become very clear that the time we find ourselves in, this time of a pandemic, a global pandemic, is the time that we must step out as men and women of faith who have the, core, the courage and the moral fortitude to do what is right no matter what. In other words, we've always found a way people of courage and people of faith to do what is right. We've always found a way to found a way to step out and to step up. This can be no different. Whether it was protesting injustice, going to school board meetings, advocating for services in our communities, those of us who have the voice who are not afraid to use our voices, we've always done that. Now what we must do is to carry others with us to make sure that our voices are amplified. Because for many of us who've stepped up and for many of you who've stepped up, you've gotten those hard fought gains and we've made progress, but we know that there is still more progress to be made. I'm often amazed by how much ordinary citizens, people who just work in the trenches every day in our communities, how much they get done. And I know that many of you on this call this evening, you are grassroots workers who just get up every day trying to make a difference and to make things happen in your community. And so now is the time for those of us with access to resources and access to people and access to connections to step in that gap and help out and to do what we can to make sure that we begin, become the voice for those who need our help. So today, more than ever, we find those battle lines shifting and equality might look different, but what has not changed is the need for people just like those of us on this phone who come together, those of us on this call, who come together every year for a leadership conference just like this one to figure out how do we make the difference. Now what we're saying is let's use this leadership legacy moment to take that proactive action that we need to and move things forward for our people as a collective. That means we must continue to take action in items in areas such as getting better educational opportunities for our children, getting better housing, getting healthy food options in our community, working to get that criminal justice system that works for all of us and getting equal access to family supporting jobs. While advocacy works, and we know that it does, some days we must still be prepared to get into good trouble by stirring things up, going to those meetings and asking those questions, asking our elected officials, what are you planning to do next? And then making our voices heard through peaceful protests and getting in the way. It's not easy work, but it's necessary work. Think about the legacy of Congressman Lewis and others who had to endure real pain and real sacrifice. They made a way for us. They made a way out of no way. They got tired, but they continued to push on peacefully because they knew that those who were in the trenches in the community, they are the ones getting things done. And they wanted to make sure they were always there providing that support. So because of them, now we are here. And so we must pick up that mantle and we must go forward and continue that struggle and continue that push for justice and continue that push for making sure there's equal resources and equal access to resources in our community. We can do, much, we can do no less. We must reach back and be that bridge for others that might need our help. It's still time to continue to raise our voices and commit to using our various platforms to making changes. Changes are needed. This is the time to make changes when everything that we know is really being resettled on the board as we come out of this global pandemic. So get into good trouble by fighting for what is just and fighting for what is right. The last leadership legacy action I urge you to take is to work hard. When we think about the leadership legacy left to us by the person for whom the conference will be named moving forward, there's two words that describe him. And someone said it to me, they called it relentless leadership. And when I thought about Congressman John Lewis, I said, well, what does that mean? And then I immediately thought, work hard. He was one of the hardest working persons that I knew. He showed us each day that there was no shortcut. We have to go out and put in the work. And once that day was done, you have to come back the next day and do it all over again. 
and that cycle just continues. There is no resting on our laurels for those of us who know that there's work to be done in our community. Real change, lasting change, boils down to someone rolling up their sleeves and just putting in the work. Our challenge today as we work to meet this moment, this significant moment, when life as we know it has been redefined by this pandemic, is to decide what our path forward is going to look like, decide how we're going to work it to get there in terms of making, some, making substantive change through meaningful solutions, and then let's work together to make it happen. We often hear that there's no progress without a struggle. But what we don't hear, my friends, is that there is no real progress without hard work. At the end of the day, someone still has to get up and do something. So to get into good trouble, necessary trouble, I urge you to do so by being willing to take this fourth leadership legacy action, which is to put in the work. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you this evening at this 20th annual leadership conference event which is being used to kick off Black History Month and is now being renamed in honor of the leadership legacy of the Honorable John Lewis, Congressman John Robert Lewis. The purpose of this conference is to enhance the quality of leadership of the university students and also the quality of leadership in this community and throughout Pike County. I shared with you four leadership les lessons that you can use to carry out the work that you will continue to do to get into good trouble. And those lessons are to make a difference, to get involved, to fight for what is right, and yes, to work hard. I remind each of you present that we are the legacy of Congressman John Lewis. He was committed to young people. This university and this community is dedicated to young people. He believed in stepping up, taking action, making noise, fighting for what's right. This community and the organizations represented here this evening do that each and every day. He believed in showing up, talking to people, never complaining, minister, ministering to others. Isn't that what we do every day? John Robert Lewis never stopped. He never lost hope. He never gave in. He believed in this university. He loved this community. He loved his family, and he loved being a leader for all. He leaves a legacy that will endure now into perpetuity. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this moment as you celebrate this year at Troy University, this transfer of leadership and legacy through this historic conference and this renaming next year officially in honor of the Honorable John Robert Lewis. We are the legacy and the proud torch bearers. We carry that torch forward proudly. May his example, his courage, devotion to nonviolence, and to a lifetime of getting in the way and getting things done through positive action, continue to carry us forward as we move into the next phase of this leadership conference. Again, congratulations, and thank you so very much for allowing me to be here with you this evening. Good evening to our speaker, Dr. Dorothy Buchanan Wilson the 29th International President of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Chancellor of Troy University, the students at Troy University, the city of Troy, and others who worked so tirelessly to ensure the success of this event. I'm Jennifer Johnson, President of Mu Alpha Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And I'm Kenrietta Stinson, the Vice President. On behalf of the members of Mu Alpha, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for this opportunity to celebrate the leadership and legacy of black excellence. I am certain that I mirror the sentiment of all those in attendance when I say tonight's event has truly been an enriching experience. Given that protocol has been established, I would like to acknowledge the excellent presentation of tonight's virtual leadership conference. With the sincerest gratitude, thank you to all the hands that orchestrated this evening's success. Again, a special appreciation to Chancellor Jack Hawkins for allowing this event to take place, and to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Dorothy Buchanan Wilson. We are so honored that you chose to grace Troy University with your time and talents this evening. We are hopeful that you will be able to grace us with your physical presence after these unprecedented times have ended. When I think of my great friend and colleague, Apostle Dr. S.D. James, 
the word visionary, leader, mentor, trailblazer, husband, father, supporter, and so much more comes to my mind. Dr. James was one that was respected by all those he came in contact with. It was an honor to serve on the leadership board with such an extraordinary man. The death of Dr. James was a shock to many and has left a void in our hearts. Dr. James served on the board for 19 years. Not only was he a dedicated member, but he also supported the leadership conference faithfully with his financial contributions. And on behalf of the leadership committee, along with myself, we would like to say thank you to the late Dr. S.C. James for your years of service and dedication. In his honor and memory, we're pleased to announce that the leadership luncheon will now be named Dr. S.D. James Leadership Luncheon. Your legacy will forever live on. We miss you and will forever cherish your memory. Has anybody here seen my old friend Dr. James? Can you tell me where he's gone? He helped a lot of people. But it seems the good die young. I just looked around and he's gone. Rest on my friend, rest on. Good evening, my name is Mary Griffin, TRIO Director at Troy University and the Chairperson of the Leadership Advisory Board. This has been an awesome program and we want to thank Dr. Wilson for her dynamic remarks, our Leadership Advisory Board for a job well done, and each of you for your attendance and support of our transition to the Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference. This concludes the 2021 virtual leadership event hosted by Troy University and the City of Troy. We invite you to join us for the 20th Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference that is scheduled for 2022. To donate to the 20th Congressman John R. Lewis Leadership Conference scheduled for 2022, please contact Holly Adams, Troy University Foundation, at hjadams at troy.edu or call 334-670-3838 or Barbara Patterson at bpatters at troy.edu 334-670-3204.